So now if you see here, if we choose print profiles, I have an option here to put my own commands, which would be the commands that we currently use in, um, uh, in the SOPAS file. So you can see this is a, um, a SOPAS command that would set the identification of the scanner to test TIM. Um, if I click on next, I can now choose a preview and choose whether underneath each of the special profile codes shows the command string or the name of the parameter. I'm going to choose the command string and we're going to choose show preview. And it's now just building up the profile codes. And now you can see this particular configuration I've put in has quite a lot of changes. But what it means is you need to scan each one of these codes in sequence as you boot up the scanner. So when the scanner boots up, the laser beam will come on momentarily. You've got to show one of these codes during the boot up phase and then continue going down each one of these codes. One thing that's very important is that you avoid scanning this first code after you've scanned any of the others because this first code puts the scanner into its factory default mode. And what I normally do is print these off when you're nowhere near the scanner, tear off that first code to make sure that I don't accidentally default the scanner that I don't want to because this default mode will permanently default a scanner. Now if we scroll through these codes there's a lot more than you would normally have on configuring a scanner but the very last code you can see down here if I scroll this one out you can see under own commands it's come out now with the command test tim which I put in earlier on. Okay so here's a quick guide to how to set the scanner up. Obviously there's a quick start. If I click start and point the laser beam at a barcode and I need to know the code I want to read. In this case it happens to be an EAN13 code. You can see the read performance I'm getting at the moment. I'm going to tweak the scan frequency and try and improve that reading performance. So by adjusting the scan frequency I can get a slightly better performance on the code. Let's choose the highest one we can get. Okay, so clearly at 750 it starts to drop off. So we'll leave the scan frequency at 700. And now I'm going to go down to look for the next thing to adjust. Before I go any further, I'm going to turn off the beeping and the diagnostics mode. So we need to set the trigger. It's currently set for sensor one, that's fine. Um, I'm going to stop the trigger by the trigger source, that means at the end of the clock pulse it turns the laser beam off, but I'm also going to choose to turn it off once it's read the code. That's just good practice. So we just look for good read, you can see that here. So select good read. The default would normally be not defined, so when you get the scanner it'll look like this. So just scroll down until you find good read, and that turns the scanner off as soon as it's read the code. Illumination control, this means that if your laser is left switched on for any longer than 10 minutes, it will automatically switch itself off. That's a power save mode and also saves the life of the laser diode. That's totally up to you or the applications to whether you enable that one. Code configuration, all of the code should be disabled apart from the one that you're reading. So you should never see it looking like this. You need to disable all of the codes that you don't want to read. Data processing, output control here is currently set as soon as possible, but normally it's set at end of trigger. So if you want the data to be sent through to your host the instant it's read the code, you select as soon as possible. The evaluation conditions allow you to put in some predetermined conditions. So for example, you can put in match codes or combination or free conditions. So you can put in a test condition here, let's call it test one. And I'm going to add a field and I'm going to say if the barcode content or if the code length is greater than, for example, 10. And I'm going to add another field and say the code content is Q and then with a wildcard afterwards. And we now have to lift this up a little bit to accept it. So now we put in an evaluation condition. And then on my output format, I can say for each code that matches the condition test one, send some data out. The default is, is actually the barcode, so start of text, 
and then the barcode. You can then just type in any free text you want in here, or you can put in some diagnostics. So if we click on this area here, I can say how many scans we got from the code, for example, or how many scans I got one after the other. So diagnostics information there, or you can put in what you want for a no read. So you might want all capitals for no read. So you just type these in freehand in this area. So what would happen here now is that if a code was read with the evaluation condition, which we programmed under test one, so you can see test one here. So if the code was greater than 10 digits and the code started with a Q and it doesn't care what was afterwards, it's then going to send out the string as we've just put in that area here. If you would then need to choose a different parameters, we then need to put in another one of these evaluation conditions or conditional output string, which we type in here. So we say for each code that matches a condition, for example, it could be match one or something, or for all codes, and then we just put in the code content. So you can stack and nest various good read options and conditional output formats. The serial output you need to change. So if you select your host output, the serial v410 was default at 96891, whereas the default for the serial v6 series is 576. So you might need to change your host output if you want to have it match the same as the default on the serial v410. Also, one new thing on the serial v610 is that you now have a serial auxiliary interface, whereas the 410 only had one auxiliary, one host interface, no auxiliary. Now we've got the serial auxiliary interface, we can choose to either have the reading diagnostic sent out on it, which will come out on the nine-way D-type inside the connection box, the CDB620, or we can output the uh, monitor the serial host, or we can output format one or output format two. So an application for that would be, for example, output format one, which we programmed earlier on. If, um, if we had this one just set as its default, so we set output format one back to default. Now, output format two, we can change to put in some other information. So for example, if I put in here, I might want to put in, for example, um, some information about the amount of scans that the scanner took. So we can put a variety of items in here. Okay, so that means we can monitor the performance of the scanner with various options in this, um, in this area and output them on the auxiliary port without making any difference to what's going out to the host. So finally, once we've got a configuration of the scanner, we can go project and then export device, choose SOPAS device file, and then browse to save it in a particular location. I shan't bother to do that just now. Once you've done that, then it means that in the future you can go and load that to a scanner. So for example, I can go and load device data to a device, browse for the file that we just saved, and load it into a totally new device. Alternatively, we can then print the profiles to load the data into the device. And that's about it. Um, there's more information on other YouTube channels about more in-depth involvement with match code teaching for the scanners. Thanks very much.